Hey, what's up? Welcome to Movie Dumpster Season 6, Episode 13. Today we're talking about Sweet Home from 1989, directed by Kiyoshi Kurosawa. I'm Joel Lascola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. And I'm Kieran. Welcome to The Dumpster. So here we are. We're here with our second episode for Trick or Trash this month. It's coming in fucking hot as shit, baby. <laughs> Let me tell you something. That's like a flaming pumpkin coming at you from like uh, the Headless Horseman. Right. Ichabod Crane, yeah. Johnny Depp, Christopher Walken. Uh, should cover that at some point. But yes, Sleepy Hollow. I got it. It was you. a horseman. Headless. Yes. Uh, Jeffrey Jones is in that. How have we not covered it? Next year, maybe. <laughs> but we have a guest with us on that the note, legacy. I guess. Yes. Kieran is with us. He's back. He's in the dungeon. Yeah, I'm, I'm back. This is, I guess, also to my second... My second appearance and also another Capcom related yes, appearance right. in a way. So uh, so Kieran joined us for our uh Super Combat Fighter Double Dumpster Edition tur- Turbo. He was on the Street Fighter the movie episode, of course. Yeah. Which was a ton of fun. For Actually, for everybody else, you know, it was uh, the worst day of their life, but for Kieran, <laughs> it was Tuesday. It, was Tuesday. it, was, it certainly was Tuesday. <laughs> I wonder, did we record that on a Tuesday? Let's just say we did. Yeah, I think we, we I think we did make a Tuesday <laughs> thing. At, at, we had to have. It's It was a long time ago. Yeah, I, it was. I, sorry, yeah. I don't remember, but. No, you're good, man. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the Dumpster Dwellers' favorite episodes. A oh, lot really? of people always tell us, they're like, oh, we love the Street Fighter episode that you did with Kieran. So oh, when awesome. you're going to have him back on the show? Well, here he is. I'm back. In the flesh, talking about another video game adjacent film. Yeah, right. Sweet Home. And also Capcom. And also Capcom. And, and also Resident Evil, kind of. Yeah. All right. So here's the deal. We're going to front load this episode with the story of Sweet Home and how it is the progenitor of Resident Evil. And a lot of other- Let's say horror in general horror, on some Which levels. also- Survival horror games in general. Yeah, yeah, The yeah. T-Virus is also known as the progenitor virus. Yes. In the games. <laughs> that uh, is that's true. That's what they originally find it in the leeches. That's right. Uh, there's going to be someone in the in the in the comments <laughs> that will flay me <laughs> with well, your own Evil doing. Zero. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna happen. They're gonna no. They're gonna be like it's older than that. Yeah, they're probably. gonna be like, but oh, they got fossilized Las Plagas. What yeah. are you talking about? <laughs> they mixed them with the thing Uribus. and made the, the yeah the <laughs> well, nemesis. They got, like, a needle into like amber, like fucking Jurassic Park. I, I think that's what Las. Yeah, actually, yeah, well, yeah. in the fourth remake, it's it's amber now. Yeah, yeah well, right. it yeah. was fossilized in the original in the original game when there were two games and they had no. You know, retconned no. lore and everything, sure. and it was then you know whatever. It was Spencer Mansion, mm-hmm. and then you know we went backwards with Resident Evil Zero, which was fine. Uh, but uh, but, but yeah, but we didn't go so far backwards that we ended up into my uh, Miami what mansion? What the hell is that? How do you say this? <laughs> Mamiya, Mamiya, Mamiya Mansion. We didn't or get Mamma quite Mia. back there, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> Mamma Mia. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but before we once again step into the world of survival horror, if you want more movie dumpster content, including an ad-free audio version of the show, you can head over to patreon.com slash movie dumpster and you can support the show for as little as two dollars a month. And for no money at all, if you're watching this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast app, leave us that five-star review. It really does help get us out of the bottom of the dumpster and into more eardrums, eyeballs, and everything in between. We want to grow this dumpster community, so share it with your friends. Please do. And if you want any updates on the show, you can go to moviedumpsterpodcast.com and follow us on all the social medias at Movie Dumpster uh, to keep up with the Dumpster Boys, see what we're doing. We're going to be at Monster Mania next month in November, so definitely come check that out. Come say hi. You better be there. All right, now that we got all that out of the way, you know, we took care of the Mo Discs, if you will. We can now talk about Sweet Home. We we, we, we let out Chris. We saved his ass. We, we got saved the Barry. Yeah. We got we got the best ending. We we knocked Sherry or whatever. <laughs> what was that that zombie thing in the oh. remake? Sherry didn't get her. Sherry she didn't, didn't get decapitated by a hunter. No, right, that's, that's also true. Lisa yeah. Trevor. That's what I'm thinking. We we knocked her off the side. Oh, the, oh you're the talking bi- remake. Gotcha. Yeah, the bitch yeah, in the oh, basement, okay. right behind the steps. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Succeeded. Yeah, you put the masks in the wall. Right. Yeah. Spencer was fucked up, man. Yeah, he was. What the <laughs> what the hell is wrong with him? I got all these ideas from this Mamiya people. I, I, I get. <laughs> The I'm never going to get this right. The cast of Mamma Mia <laughs> yeah, was like, Mama dude, Mia. Spencer, you should totally do that. <laughs> this ghost from Italy, obviously. <laughs> Mamma Mia, here I go again. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so Sweet Home, guys, from 1989. Now, the movie 
came out in 88, and I think the game uh, also came out in 88, but I think officially it was released, you know, in 89. Okay. Now, here's the thing. We've all seen game adaptions of movies. It's nothing new, especially in 89. Mm -hmm. Like, we, we've had E.T. on Atari. Everything from fucking E.T. <laughs> to Texas Chainsaw Massacre to Nightmare right. on Elm Street and Friday the 13th. The big difference between this is this is the first one that were made parallel to each other. Right. Okay? So, like, th this movie and this game were conceived to coexist as part of their marketing. Right like to promote each other. To almost. promote each other, yeah. So the each thing goes hand in hand with each other. So it's like you're getting like the live action experience of Sweet Home Now Play the Game kind of thing. And like mm -hmm. if you want, if you want to get like um, the extra story and all that kind of stuff, you, you know, you play the game in in a world of survival horror. I've never actually played the game. Actually, same. Uh, yeah. I've never played it either. Uh, we have we have a we have a American uh, or an English, excuse me, translation cart right here that we will be playing with Kieran. Yeah. Uh right after this episode drops. So stay tuned for that. Get in that chat. It's going to be over on Twitch. We're going to drop the link here. So as soon as this episode is done premiering, we're going to go pop over there cuz we're going to be playing this. We're going to play a bunch of video games. We're going to play a bunch of video games <laughs> and we're going to love it cuz we're a bunch of fucking nerds. I uh, and I guess for anyone that's listening to this after the fact, uh audio listeners, uh what is that link? Oh, uh twitch.tv/ Kieran, it's K I E E E E E R N. Five E's. Five E's. Five E's. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, dude, this game, only available in Japan, by the way. Right. <laughs> Never got ported to, to the US or any other countries for that matter, because Nintendo was like, fuck no. Uh, it's like an Earth Battle, or, or I should say Mother One situation. Well, and Mother Three, but specifically one. Kind I guess of. It did eventually mm -hmm. come out, but. When this came out, this was the most grotesque video game at the particular time for a for for a Nintendo system, for the Famicom, that which is, sure. which is this release right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So this is the Japanese Fam Famicom release, or Super Famicom? No, it's regular Famicom. It's just yeah, for yeah. regular Famicom. And it, and it is an RPG according to the English text I could see on the box. Yeah. Yes. But a lot of this stuff, I don't want to go, I'm not going to go too crazy on a tangent, sure. but I do want to talk about the parallels for this game and how this uh, kind of birthed Resident Evil yeah. as we know it. The first game specifically. Yeah. Tokido Fujiwara, who created Resident Evil, but he also was producer and created, uh, what, uh, Ghosts and Goblins? He, he's actually, like, probably one of the most prolific Capcom creators there is. Like, uh, of a, all a producer. time. Producer. Yeah. He produced basically every major title that came out on the NES. Yeah. The Mega Man games. Um, all of them. Pretty much all, yeah. So Strider. Like four Strider. Or five was on that yeah, NES? Yeah, he did. And then the thing is... um. But he was producer. He wasn't actually like he was the guy overseeing the entire sure. thing. Yeah, he, he got and, the games to come out. Yeah, yeah. And when it came to Resident Evil, uh, he put Shinji Mikami as the director of the game yeah. because he was like, "Ah, Shinji's scared of everything. Like, put him <laughs> on because he'll know what's scary." You know, yeah. so that's why right, he did right, it. Right. But he, he was, was right. Uh, and then he left Capcom to go make Whoopi Camp and create Tomba. Well then, which is one of my favorite <laughs> PS One games. It's really good. I've never played that one. It's fun. It's like you're this pink haired uh, caveman guy. Oh, with yeah, a pink haired caveman guy with a <laughs> with a with a mace. It's like Joe and Mac. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he's the producer for Sweet Home and Juzu Itami, who is the actor. He plays uh, Mr. Uh, Yamamara. Oh, okay. Yamamaru, okay, yeah. excuse me, in the movie. He produced both the movie and the game as well. Like, oh, financially. no way. Yeah, the dude. guy from the the gas station guy? Yeah. No way. Huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so weird. <laughs> interesting, uh, he, interesting. What's fucked up about him is like when he died, just a side, because I was reading about him, because I don't really yeah, yeah. know too much about him. Um, he f jumped off a building and killed himself. Oh, my God. And it was in the news that he did that because he was ha like he there was an affair that he was having and he didn't want it to get out. And the news broke that he was going to have an affair or whatever. So he was like really ashamed of it. So he killed himself. Whoa. Years later, a member of the Yakuza gang came out and we're like, nah, we brought him to the top of the building. And we we're like, either you jump off or we're going to shoot you in the fucking face. Holy shit. Because he was about to make a movie about this particular faction of the Yakuza and how it lined up with another, uh, this religious fact in Japan. So he, he did a little too much research. They couldn't just yeah. say, you can't make it move along. It's like, you know, too much jump. I don't think they, I don't think they deal. They only deal in absolutes, uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> 
No gray Yakuza area. are a Sith. Yeah. Oh my god, that's brutal. <laughs> that's crazy. I would not have. I didn't do any research. Uh, I watched the movie. I also too. I I worked on the AVGN Resident Evil Survivor oh, yeah. episode. Yes, and I researched heavily into like what started the series and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. And uh, I never knew about Tokoro Fujiwara until I did that episode. Really? That was where I first learned. And then I was like, whoa, he did all of this stuff. He mm. wasn't just Resident Evil, just this. He, he uh, Ghosts and Goblins, yeah. Strider, mm-hmm. uh, every major release from like the 80s and 90s, he did, he helmed on in Capcom. Which is in- incredible. I mean, yeah. like the of legacy classics. of games. Yeah, yeah a yeah. lot of classics. But like Sweet Home specifically was like the jump, like I said before, was like the it's the beginning of the survival horror genre. Like it's an RPG, sure, but it's also an adventure game mm-hmm. and it's also a horror game. Right. So like this changed... This is such a uh, pivotal point in gaming history, even though we didn't get it in the States overall to to video games in general and the, and the genre itself. It gave way to all of that. Mm-hmm. It, it is mm-hmm. the fucking granddaddy of all the games that we love, like Parasite Eve and, and Resident Evil and Alone in the Dark. Silent and, uh, Hill. Silent Hill, you know. So, yeah, there, there's if you look at this game and you look at the movie... Um, and you look at, excuse me, if you look at Sweet Home, the game, and you look at Resident Evil, the game, there's like a ton of parallels to it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, like the door opening uh, animations are like almost wow. verbatim. Mm-hmm. Uh, when the main zombie in the hall, like after you go through the door and you see him and, he, and you know, he does the turnaround thing, uh, that's like based off one of the animations in this, which is like a maniac. And it's like a dude with his head turned. You don't know what's wrong with him yet. And he yeah. turns around, he's a fucking skull face. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So that's from it. Also, all the mechanics of the game, right? So I know a lot of people bitch about like Resident Evil having like not a lot of slots for stuff and you have to yeah. run around and drop shit off. Yeah. And like that's- I'm that guy. Yeah. <laughs> never playing as Chris. Ain't ever happened. Sean yeah. fucking oh can't my God. stand it. Beat it as Jill. I'm good. Uh, Chris is such a slog. Yeah. It really is like- hard to play as him absolutely so in sweet home as we'll find out when we play you have five characters and each of them i believe has uh you can have a weapon you can have an item and then there's two inventory slots Hmm. so it's not much and they all have like a special ability they all have one like like uh yeah i did see that they each have a unique ability yeah kind of like a mario 2 thing yeah Hmm. emmy in the game is the master of unlocking by ah. the way, hmm. she has a skeleton key to the mansion. Hmm. Another thing that I, I really loved, of, and I haven't played this, but like the idea, I love immersive games. Yeah. Especially like tabletop games and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Like it, like where you have to keep your notes and like figure all the stuff out. This is like one of those games where, you know how in Resident Evil you pick up files and stuff and notes and shit and that kind of puts the whole story together for yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. So they do the same thing in this, but there's no file system. So you have to fucking write everything down. Oh, okay. Oh, you're not going to know or, what the hell's or, happening. Or you will not beat the game. You need like codes or something that like a safe code that might be in that thing. You need the number that unlocks this fucking safe and you need the the right uh pathway steps and you need all this stuff because there's like parts where it's like in the dark. Mm-hmm. Huh. Um it's kind of cool for it, the time period. Yeah. It was it's that's what I'm saying. Like it's fucking like revolutionary because like it's forcing the player to not only play the game, but actually be a part of the game. Yeah, you're you actively know, participating. You, you're the sixth member of this party, like straight oh, up. Yeah, that's you know true. what I mean? So you're keeping your notes and you're writing all this stuff down. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really cool. And and how much uh, of that stuff that Resident Evil borrowed from that, like the 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 little bits of inventory you don't, you know, you have to be very conscious of what you pick up and, and all that kind of stuff. Also, like there are key key runs like key item runs where like you know how like you know the fucking eagle metal is like all oh. the way over here mm-hmm. and you got to grab it from here and and go around this way to, to to get it and then you got to run all the way back and plug it in same shit here same kind of thing the backtracking the backtracking yeah so and that's pretty fucking ambitious yeah for a top down rpg game yeah and this is you said 89 so 89. this is only i mean uh, Mario Bros was eighty five. Yeah, this is this is before Mario three. Yeah, you're yeah. you're dealing with mostly side scrollers or like single room games. There's not very many. I mean, you you have things like uh, I would say the RPGs mostly on the NES and things like that. But this is something that's different. I mean, you have like Final Fantasy and stuff. Yeah, and, uh, what, Dragon Warriors, Dragon Warriors, like and yeah. stuff like that. But like this is like a different flavor altogether. Oh, yeah, because action adventure wasn't really the same. There was either RPG or there was 
you know, like side Zelda. scrolling. Like there was the Metroid and yeah. things like that. But yeah, you're right. There's not a lot. I mean, Zelda. Zelda, well, that sure. Too, yeah. Zelda, <laughs> I guess it's like, but. Even that is like I recently just played all the Zelda games. More so like <laughs> like uh, the Adventure of Link. Like yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Adventure of Link is like yo. That game is Dark Souls. Yeah, like straight up. <laughs> I've never played it until only a few weeks ago, and I beat it's it. Hard. And I was like, holy shit, this is Dark Souls. Like Dark Souls <laughs> ripped this game off. But yeah, also like I was saying before, I, I, I did mention that they have like special abilities and stuff. But like, oh yeah, you need them to beat the game. Mm-hmm. So, like, one person has, like, so Asuka has a vacuum, which we'll talk about in the movie. Oh, okay. But, she, you know, you dust off one of the paintings, and then, and then, uh, uh, Taguchi, right? He's the, he's the guy like the who's driver like the, he's or the, he's the, Well, he's the camera guy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He yeah, takes yeah. a photograph, and you need all that stuff because oh. all those trigger events give you clues to, to beat the game. Cool. Does, does yeah. daddy, can he knock the door down? Is that, I, is that his power? <laughs> yeah, his power Kazo. is fucking running into the, yeah. Yeah. yeah Kazu. Yeah. Also, this is like the first game to do uh, quick time events. Oh, no hmm. shit. So so it's also turn-based RPG. So when you're walking around, there's random battles and you fight fucking zombies and ghosts and demons and all kinds of shit. Uh, but you also can, when you walk around, there's random quick time encounters of like a flying chair or like a flying fucking knife. And you only have a certain amount of time to choose like, are you going to dodge? Are you going to... Are you going to pray? Are you going to, you know what I mean? To get yeah, out of the yeah. way that of whatever is it is. totally a scene in the movie. Yeah. Straight yeah. up. Yeah, pretty much, <laughs> okay. Yeah. The battle axe, if yeah. I, if you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Oh, yeah. So I just thought that was so cool. Like, I, it's a shame that the majority of the world didn't, like, get to play this game. Also, like, all the animations and shit. There's, like, fucking skeletons throwing up blood and shit. And, oh, like, God. like. They're fu- it's crazy. Wow. Yeah. And there's like jump scares in the game. Like, I, again, like that shit, like the quick time events, it just like tops up. You know hmm. what I mean? So it's pretty neat randomly. Yeah, That's yeah, like yeah. Nintendo was so against anything that was subversive in America. That's why they were like, like, they were like fuck nah, you. you got it. Yeah. It was like, <laughs> I don't know if that was because of Atari with all their stuff, like where they just let anything fly on their system. But mm-hmm. yeah, Nintendo was real harsh about anything that was going to come out on their system and it. You know, and also two different countries were different and stuff like yeah, that. So I yeah. could see this game not. Was there ever a cap in up, there? You know? If there was a cap in there, that ain't going <laughs> yeah. to America. They ain't gonna understand what the hell that is. <laughs> like it's a turtle with a pool of water in his head. Nah, it's too much to explain here. On? <laughs> <laughs> he, he reaches up your asshole and grabs uh, your soul out. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. One, well, one of the stories. Just one last thing, like the Resident Evil tie back. Um, there's like multiple endings to the game. So like, the best ending you can get is all five characters. Survive. Survive. Yeah. And that's like the secret ending, right? So, spoiler alert, uh, so whoever was playing the fucking movie fucked up. And- <laughs> uh <Uh-oh. laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you get that ending, right? Uh, so, so if you, uh, each one gets a different ending. So, so should we like- go for the movie accurate ending, or should we Shit. try best ending when we actually play we'll this game? Well, that means we have, to fuck, we have to make sure that those specific three people survive. Yeah, yeah. So, that should be interesting. Mm. Guess we'll, we'll figure it we'll out. We'll find out. I don't know how hard that's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that's pretty much it about the game that I wanted to talk about. I'm very excited to play it with you. We're going to have a really good time streaming, so m- make sure to stay tuned. But um, we're going to jump into the movie now. Um, talk a little bit about behind the scenes of the movie. There's not that much to get through. So um, Kyoshi Kurosawa um, also directed 2001's Pulse. Yeah, I saw that. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah. Which, is, which is pretty incredible. Um, and from what I saw from his filmography, like everything before this was like... Um, it seemed like softcore stuff. Mm. You know how like they do that weird kind of shit. Yeah, uh, no, yeah. We've I think we've had a few directors or on the show over the years. Evil Dead, <laughs> specifically Evil Dead Trap with like the Pinky Violence and the Angel Gut stuff. I, it's not that. It's like it's more like drama comedy. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nudie cutie kind of thing. I mean, there's one. I forgot what the fucking name of it is, but like. These two nymphos that are like across this across a building from this other guy like sees this kid having sex with his mom and then they like go over to intervene and end up like fucking the kid. And what like, the fuck? Like, like, like it's this weird like weird sexual <laughs> oh, triangle God. movie. Um, but he did he did also take part in doing two different um, anthology films, horror anthology films. The other big thing for me is that Dick Smith is on effects in this. Now he's heading the entire Japanese uh, team of effects people. And they fucking look amazing. Yeah, yeah, Dick Smith, yeah. Dick Smith is like the <laughs> granddaddy. Uh, he's like, put it this way, he is the idol of like Rick Baker. 
and like Robbo team and like all of those guys. So like that's their that's their guy that they look up to. Right. Put they put on a pedestal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I never got to meet Dick Smith. I wish I did. Um, I heard he was like one of the nicest dudes. Um, and he's like one of the best makeup effects guy. And he was always generous about sharing his techniques and things like that. Mm. Um, and I just wanted to mention real quick because I think when this episode drops, um, I had worked on the AVGN episode that is out right now. The oh yes, what is it called? So so did I, and so did Sean. <laughs> I edited it. Well, me me and James edited it. Yeah. Uh, it's beating Jekyll and Hyde. Beating Jekyll and Finally. Hyde. Finally, I just wanted to mention that because I used because there's an Exorcist theme that runs through the game through mm-hmm. the uh, through the episode, and I did the um the father nerd makeup on yes. James. Oh my god, it came out so good. But I used the same technique that Dick Smith used on Max von Sydow from The Exorcist. So I thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> cool. It is really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I was unfamiliar with uh, Dick Smith. Mm. I only saw the name, and then I was like, yeah. it was in English, so it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Dude, and then I figured right. you guys would tell me who he is or something. I was like, they'll they'll know. <laughs> I, love, I love how it's credited too. It's just yeah, so yeah. Um, but it's like SFX, like it's like the the only like, only in English the credit, credit. The only English yeah, credit yeah, like, yeah. that comes up. So I was like, <laughs> he's got to be somebody I've seen a movie of. I'm not as well versed with like uh, with with you know, special effects mm-hmm. people. I know the most, like Tom Savini is like the most yeah. I know really. But he's a prolific dude too. And again, yeah, like I was yeah. saying, like he, he's another one that would like looks up to Dick mm-hmm. Smith. You know oh yeah, yeah. That's I think crazy. Dick Smith also, I think he won an Academy Award for um, Little Big Man where he did mm. uh, Dustin Hoffman's makeup, wow. the old age makeup in that movie too. Mm. So if anybody's seen that, that's, it's like not horror. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Good makeup. But, yeah. yeah. So by the way, this movie is only on VHS and Laserdisc. It has not gotten a fucking DVD or Blu-ray yet. I don't know how, okay? It's also like streaming nowhere. It's no, on it's YouTube. Not. It is on YouTube and just just kind of an interesting thing that that is on that cut is that there's actually an intro that actually shows the game and actually kind of spoils some of the movies, well, so I wouldn't recommend uh, watching it. It's the trailer. Oh. So that trailer, that's for the movie and the game they just attach that to okay. the front, I guess, of the upload, whoever did that. Yeah. Okay, okay. But it's yeah, it does kind of spoil movie. some shit, but it's cool to see, oh, okay, now I kind of get, like, the game without playing yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Because it, like, mixes it together, which yeah, is, yeah, yeah. is kind of neat, yeah. Um, it's on YouTube if you want to watch it. Um, this wasn't available for a long time. Like, it wasn't online for a long time. We Chris Barr and I, from Talks from the Dark Side... Uh, we had a company called Home Video Express in uh, the late or the early 2000s, and we put out Sweet Home. This is one of the first versions of the film that you could grab with the subtitles on it. Okay, because I don't think the VHS has the subs on it, but I remember Chris getting a rip of this and being like stoked about it, and then and then like putting his the his own subs to this. I'm pretty sure. Oh wow! So like, huh. so this was a really special one for me. So I thought that was really cool, and I. Don't have any of these. So this isn't even mine. So each one that I shown on the show isn't even my fucking copy. Uh, I <laughs> borrowed your own copy. I borrowed this because everybody was very nice uh, when we were doing these and supported us. Uh, Matt Curione, friend of the show from Monsters Never Die podcast. Yes, he had this, and I was like, dude, you got to let me borrow that because we're doing Sweet Home. I need to. I need to show it, and um, I believe the cut that we're probably using for the clips is going to be this rip too. Yeah, it had the, the logo popped up. The a few logo times popped up. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, Home Video Express. Who's that? Now I know that. It's actually really cool yeah. that it's like you guys. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so let's talk about this film. Uh, we usually let the guest do a little proc- plot crunch in the movie. You don't have to say the entire movie, but just give it, what, what is it about? Okay, yeah. So, I mean, it's uh, a TV crew mm-hmm. going to the Mamiya Mansion. The Mamma, Mamma Mia. Mia Mansion. <laughs> and they- <laughs> Mamma Mia, here I go again. They stop off at a place that's like, we're not letting you up there. We're not letting you up. Let's let them up there. Yeah. They let them up there. This It's this mansion. This guy is a, a fresco painter, which is a paint on wall. Uh, it's a wall painting. Like you don't have a, a canvas. You paint directly to the wall. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're, the final painting he ever did is there. And they want to go do a thing about it. And they want to talk about this thing. So they go in and then all these crazy ghostly hijinks start happening. Uh, including digging up a dead baby uh, <laughs> oh, from yeah. a from an HR Geiger co- coffin looking beat thing. Me to like, it. Yeah, yeah, it's like uh, it gets crazy, and then they have to basically like 
you know, exercise this demon in a way that uh, you find out all this stuff about what happened. There's a crazy gas station worker that is a like a, a sorcerer, basically. What's the <laughs> <It's> like, mark? <laughs> knows things. Yeah, he knows it's, things. Um, it's, it's a fun time. Yeah, it's a trip, man. Yeah. It's a trip. So yeah, like uh, like Kieran said, we open this film uh, with with kind of like a prologue. There's like shadow puppets and stuff. You hear like baby laughing and crying, yeah, and cooing stuff. and stuff it's like cooing. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But we fucking get thrown right into it, right? So we meet our TV crew or our documentary documentarians mm-hmm. uh, that is, that consist of uh, Kazu. His daughter Emmy, his producer Asuka. Or no, no, the Akiko. She's the Akiko. Akiko. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. yeah. Asuka Aki- is the actual uh the reporter. She's reporter, like the reporter. Yeah, yeah whatever, but she's yeah. also a uh, she restores paintings too. Is yes. another thing that comes up. Yeah. Which is kind of weird because she's yeah. like the restorer, but also the host. Yeah. Guy, I or that's whatever. why I was like, is this like one of those shows like it's like Gordon Ramsay going to fix your restaurant? <laughs> but it's like she goes and fixes <laughs> your painting paintings. Nightmares? Yeah, something like that. I don't know. Mansion it's like, nightmares. Yeah. <laughs> D- Dana Barrett's running the whole operation. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yano, <laughs> Everything you're that, doing yeah. is bad. <laughs> gave her that good review. She started her own company. <laughs> um and then uh Taguchi who is or Taguchi whatever you want to call him yeah, is yeah. um cameraman. He's the camera guy. Yeah. Yeah. And an idiot of the group, basically. He's like, uh, also uh, the dumb dude. Idiot <laughs> slash stalker of Asuka yeah, the entire time. He's weird. Question mark, yeah. The, the ghosts take advantage of that. Yes. Yep. yep. He peels the like thing off her eye when she's sleeping and she's just staring at him. <laughs> yeah, in the like, car. I was like, I <laughs> fucking smacks him in the <laughs> yeah. face. Because they're all like hanging out at this yeah. location, I guess. I don't know, waiting for a dust storm or something to settle. It's like, yeah. maybe, maybe the Jurassic Park when Hammond comes down with the helicopter. I was oh, wondering yeah. about that, too. Like, I, At first, it looked like from the outside, Outside, it looked like they're in a desert, and right. then it was in the inside. It looks like just a storm. But they're they're waiting for the dad Kazu to basically be like, "Hey, can we film in this place?" They're, and they don't want to let them. They tr- they're trying to make a deal because like they're in this town that's like it's like this dead ghost town, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, like like literally. it's like a poor Japanese village. Yeah. Um, and the mansion is on like the outskirts, so they're trying to get permission from these guys who I guess are the landowners or the the town commission or something. Yeah, the evil like government. scientists. Yeah. <laughs> this fucking guy comes in with like the guy. He looks like Hunter S. Thompson. Yeah. Or uh, or um Johnny Depp uh, when he when he when he's in uh, Fear oh, and Loathing. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Well yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. He's taking a shoe full of sand. He's got the fucking goggles on. Yeah, see, that was where were they in a desert or something? Like, I I don't know. Because then they're immediately in the woods almost right after this. I guess I don't know Japanese uh, geography as well as I thought I did. Just like the Texas chainsaw geography, I'm fucking totally (laughs) wrong about all the time. And they're from Tokyo, like the the, the, the TV crew. So who the fuck knows where they are? They could, I mean, also, too, like what there's. They're in the Arclay Mountains. There's five (laughs) islands. Yeah, basically. There's five islands, so they could be on any of those islands. We also don't true. They, unless they did drive from Tokyo. I they know. might have. They I think they, 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 I they think probably that. did, actually, because they yeah. mentioned Tokyo. We like, got to go, back, let's to go back to Tokyo yeah. Yeah, a couple times. But uh, yeah. this scientist or whatever, the, uh, he's not really he's a scientist. He's not a scientist. He's like a landowner. Yeah, the landowner. Yeah. yeah, and they're like, oh, they want the keys to the to the Mumya Mansion. And they're like, well, no, you you can't have that. It's cursed or whatever. Mm. And the guy's like, oh, yeah, but we want to make like a documentary about it. And he's like, oh, you're going to make like a nice like nature movie or something? Why yeah. don't you go check out the thousand year old tree in the, in the town square? Yeah. So this fucking scumbag ends up like giving him the key and he like take it out. It's like this ominous like skeleton yeah. key. <laughs> well, they keep saying it's cursed. Yeah. They keep they, mentioning that. Well, then talking. they had to check the key though to yeah. see what the name of the actual <laughs> key is and stuff. And then it changed in their inventory. <laughs> To the mommy a key. Yeah, 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 do you yeah. want to inspect yeah. it? Yeah. Would you? Yeah. Do you want to? It, I wish that actually happened. Holy like shit. he hands it to them and it cuts to his screen. It's like, will you take the mommy the man- a mansion the, key? The or mansion something like key. That? Yeah. <laughs> mommy a key. Yeah. Mommy a key. <laughs> so he I, pockets it and they they hit the road. They yeah. do hit the road, but I love the little bit between him uh, between the two landowner guys. I'm gonna call them landowners because that's what I. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I guess that's what they are. But he's like. He's like, you can't let them up there. What about the curse? And he's like, hmm, the curse. He's like, well, here's the deal. We give them the key and they go up there. Worst case, uh, best case scenario, uh, we open it for a tourism spot so we can get some mm-hmm. business going. And worst case, but also best case for us, if they die in a supernatural way, we'll make the papers and yeah, everybody will exactly. flock yeah, in yeah, yeah. And, and like come to the town and like buy shit. They don't care at all. No, they don't give a fuck. Yeah. Here you go. Hit the road. Then the Zelda music kicks up. <laughs> I love the soundtrack of this music, but I could not think of fucking Zelda, like Ocarina of Time, like 10 years too early music. Listen. (laughs) 
you know, that makes sense. I was waiting for you to be like, then the fucking circus no, music. It wasn't quite up. circus music. It definitely sounded like some <laughs> early N64 beats. Loved it. Yeah. Yeah. It does. And the the whole beginning of the movie gave me a vibe of like Dead Alive. Yeah, uh, with the yeah. music and the way it's shot and certain things, and just also to the the film quality, it reminds me of Dead Alive, sure. and and also like Evil Dead Two probably mm-hmm. a little bit, or Evil Dead One really even, but yeah. it's also because it's not. It starts off really lighthearted and oh, and, yeah. and just kind of goofy. I think most of the film is lighthearted until yeah. it's not. Until yeah, until, until you, suddenly, <laughs> until you get hit with explicit scenes of violence and gore. Yeah, <laughs> it's like holy shit. Because we kind of like we go to the mansion yeah. and it's like again they're playing that music, kind of you know honky dory kind of stuff. You know what it kind of sounds like? It kind of sounds like uh, Gizmo's lullaby uh, a from bit. Gremlins. Yeah, yeah, like at a different tempo. If you were bit. to play it on like a keyboard sure. or some mm-hmm. shit, yeah. Uh, but they go, they go up to this gate to this music and uh, Taguchi just with zero effort. Maybe that was his power in the game. He could break locks. Uh, instantly just pulls his chain <laughs> off. No problem. They're like, OK, drive the Jeep in. Yeah. Start going up this ominous hill. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're trying to open the door and they can't get it open. And like Kazu like goes to charge at it. Yeah, he licks his hands and everything, too. <laughs> like he like rubs them together. Spits and, goes to do it. and somehow Taguchi like is inside the mansion. He went through already. a window. Yeah, and yeah. opens the door and fucking he runs right into him. It's like, a three, like it's like a Three Stooges routine, right? And there's like funny comedy like that too, which is which is kind of balances out all the spooky stuff. Yeah, uh, that's why I said like Dead Alive. It reminds me of just that. It's a horror movie, but it's goofy for yeah. most, for just certain parts. Yeah. It it's still even. Even to the end, it is kind of goofy, but yeah. it's not. It's very. It is a. It's actually. You know, I gotta say, it's like a feel good movie. It I, actually isn't. It, it, it ends up uh, there. Yeah. yeah. Do you, do you think? I think it. I think it has to do with the fact that the, like it's also tied to the video game. Like they wanted to sell units, and they're like, True. oh, we need to make this okay enough. I mean, there's some pretty explicit shit in here, but I don't know what the rating system is like in Japan. I, I can't show pubic they, hair, but they yeah. can show fucking dude melting. They didn't have the M's or the, yeah. uh, you know, any of that figured out yet, I don't think. I don't think yeah. that was in the 90s. Mm. The ESRB yeah. hasn't been no. around. And Mortal the Kombat. And, <laughs> you know. The Jack Thompsons of the yeah. world. <laughs> so they're there, and wow, what a mansion. Oh, Because yeah. it's huge. <laughs> they do set up the first uh, kind of uh, bread crumbs, if you will, yeah. of this baby carriage that they bump mm-hmm. into, this oh. ghostly carriage. Was it a carriage or the wheelchair? They find a wheelchair yeah. too, but when Taguchi's kind of stumbling around in there after he rips some boards off a window, he yeah. does like kind of bump into it in the he dark, does, doesn't he? Okay, yeah. Taguchi's. <laughs> so they get there and they're they find the painting, and Asuka's oh, like, yeah. "Wow, this is great. Here it is. It's huge." Mm-hmm. She fucking uh, she like hooks up a gas mask on herself yeah, with like yeah. this vacuum, and that's like her power in the game is that yeah. she has a vacuum, mm-hmm. and she's like sucking the the dust off the fresco. Uh, meanwhile, Akiko like or Akiko, however you say that. Tells uh, Taguchi to like fill up the ga- fill up the generator so they can turn right. the lights on because it's fucking dark in there. Yeah. They can yeah. barely see anything. Yeah, they're like there must be an electric generator. There must be like, right. <laughs> there must be. Well, you have to go out to the shed and then you have to get the gas can. Then yeah. you have to go down yeah, to the right? street and yeah. then fill up the gas can and then come back. <laughs> but again, if you've gone too far, you'll see Lisa Trevor. <laughs> yeah. You know, turn around. <laughs> he like walks through like this little uh, path and like knocks over this. Or no, no, he walks he, past I, this like totem. Yeah, and he goes to like get into the shed. And he's trying to get into the shed. He ends up like kicking the fucking thing over for a rock and like bashes the lock off. Is that what it was? Okay, yeah. I kind of was confused about that. I thought it was a character from off screen, but that makes more sense. No, but yeah, it was him, and he it was like a skull rock was yeah. on top of it. <laughs> it I think it was an actual skull. And he's skull. like, oh, it's yeah. clearly purposefully there. Okay. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. All right, that adds some more context yeah. to to. to <laughs> Something that may happen to him later. But then. It's, yeah. it's like, you know, will you take the rock, equip, and then he fucking breaks the yeah. lock. Uh, <laughs> and uh, then the worst rock the generator. he could have grabbed. Yeah. yeah. But you're right. Yeah, he starts the generator. All the lights pop mm-hmm. on. They're like, wow, this fresco really looks amazing. And they're like looking at it on the computer. And it's like almost done already. I'm like, there's no fucking way. But okay. <laughs> She's blowing off a portion. And it's just like it, home sweet home TM. Yeah. You know, like yeah, 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 TM right. is there. <laughs> it said the thing. It was like. <laughs> it's not in Japanese either. It's in English. Yeah. yeah. Which is strange. Body by Jake just starts convulsing in the corner <laughs> with chicken hanging off his Dude, fucking he's mouth. he's prowling the woods on PCP for sure. <laughs> he's looking for the zombies. Yeah. So, you know, now it's just, with a, there's a couple 
story beats in here where like well Han- Emmy finds some like necklace that I, I thought was gonna go somewhere but never really does. Emmy goes exploring and she's just being a kid. She's like jumping yeah. on a bed and shit, and she turns on the fucking you know she puts the microfilm and the projector and yeah, turns it yeah. on and you get like you know uh, the the picture of the Wesker kids. No, that doesn't happen. Yeah, right. And they play with the and or that was that was a that was a Alexia Ashford. Oh, excuse me, and Alfred Ashford. <laughs> <laughs> the twins. <laughs> the oh, wait, twins. I think. Wait, is it Ashford or Ashcroft? No, it's, I think Ashford. it's Ashford. It's Ashford. Ashford. Okay. I fucked up. I, I was don't gonna know say, why. I... Fuck the name of. God damn it! They're gonna. They're gonna crucify me. I don't you know blew. why. I don't know why I said <laughs> the Wesker it. twins. Well, from the TV the show. Oh, and also, d- if you saw the new movie too, there was yeah. like they basically recreated that scene, but then put what's his name, uh, the guy who plays M Bison and. Chun Li. Oh yeah, yeah. He's yeah. just in the background, like duh. <laughs> it's like, it's, uh, but you're right about that projector because it's like she's just fucking around, and then it's like the thing lights on fire, and the walls like on fire, and she's like, oh, yeah. The, fil- the film burns, but yeah. we see a picture of Lady Mum Mumia. Yeah, Mamma Mia. She's on the wall with her baby. Yeah. Um. So that's kind of like a creepy thing uh, that we get a little taste of. Um, but so, so Hanzu and, uh, Akiko have like a thing, the unspoken thing. Yeah. So, so Hanzu's is Emmy's dad and Emmy's trying to hook up Hanzu with Akiko and Akiko is like Emmy's like surrogate mom. Cause they're like best friends or whatever. Kazu you mean? You keep Kaz- oh, I'm sorry. Kazu. Yes. Yes. Why did I say Hanzu? I don't know. I knew what you meant, though. Yeah, I just didn't uh, want you to keep saying it. Please, please correct me if I'm <laughs> now. I sound like a fucking asshole. I mean, I'm saying Mamma Mia over yeah, here, well, so yeah. you know. But yeah, you're right. There is that weird Kazu. thing. Yeah, Kazu. Kazu, and she's also like way out of his league. Yeah, so well, he <laughs> needs to jump on that because he's being dumb. She kind of turns into the the hero of the story by the end of this, but she's yeah. kind of like the headstrong person on this yeah. in this group, kind of yeah. getting things done. She's not yeah. taking shit from no one. No. She's like, Asuka becomes like a fucking prima donna at one point, yeah. and she's like, "Bitch, you better shut up!" Like we're all working on this documentary together. Yeah, she tells her like, "This like, is, it is my show." Yeah, like, she gets all weird and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we have the Gucci. I think this is the scene. He, he wanders off. He's like looking around. Well, you see this big battle axe being dragged yeah, on the ground. Oh yeah, my you don't God. know what's happening. Yeah. So, so Daddy Kazu, they call him Daddy a lot. I mean, Emmy does. Yeah, but, well, because yeah. it's her dad. Yeah. So then he opens a door. It's a pretty good jump scare, actually. And the axe comes towards him, and it's just the Gucci yeah. fucking with this axe, this heavy ass oh axe. My God. Yeah. This is like a the, like the fucking executioner Magini axe, dude. Like, yeah, it's huge. It's yeah. a ridiculous axe. He's dragging it, and it's like, oh, okay, like. Like, that's nice. Maybe don't play with that. He's like, what's the big deal? Almost drops it on their foot. Yeah. He's like, ugh. <laughs> Instead does. of dropping, he almost hits yeah, fucking yeah. Katsu with it. He yeah. fucking throws his cheese balls all over the oh, place. Yeah. So, oh, there's also, too, that part where, like, what's her name? Asuka starts screaming and a giant column Oh, falls yeah. off yes, the ceiling yes. and almost kills Kazu. Like, like it lands on him. It looked like, and I was like, "Whoa!" And he's like, and he's, ah. he's like, "Oh, we should watch out, everyone." And it's like, "Wait, dude, that landed on you." Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I missed that. Like when, right when they walk in the mansion, that happens. Yeah, yeah. it's like, like right in the beginning. It, there's some weird stuff that happens. The axe is like definitely the next one. Mm-hmm. Well, I want to mention too. It's like instead of like laying the axe down, like totally out of the way, they're like, "What if I just put it in the corner, like kind of on an angle?" That's yeah. not going to be important. It's crazy because no. Nothing ever comes from that axe throughout the rest of the movie, even though they just lay it precariously in the corner. There's no foreshadowing happening. No, at all. I'm just no. joking. <laughs> Something, it's yeah, good the axe, they but... put it in the corner and they just lay it there. They For just, a while. They prop it in the corner. It's like a fucking hundred pound axe. Easy. Yeah. Lay it down on the ground. <laughs> it's like. It's like, also, why does a fresco painter just have that axe? And it's also in the shed, wasn't it? What did he find? Yeah. It in the shed? I, I, why is it in their generator shed? It's I, an art collector. He's an art collector. <laughs> He's like, this will go in the gen- This will go great in my generator this shed. This might have been from the previous <laughs> owner, based on information mm. we're going to get shortly. But well, yeah. Well, once the tyrant breaks out of the fucking test tube, maybe he's yeah. waiting for him up there. Well, as we're going to find out later, those stones were the only thing keeping it back, and he <laughs> fucked that up. What were you supposed to use the axe to fight? the ghost you can't was use it, like really silver anything. no i mean maybe there is the part where like you know not to jump super far ahead but they throw like a she throws like a chair at this ghost and the chair oh, explodes the like it's, 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 it's like aqua teen hunger force yeah. when they throw an item on the ground and it just blows up and it's that stock explosion yeah, that, that, that was kind of a credi- incredible especially for like the climax of the film that that's oh yeah gonna throw at not this for thing, nothing but, but i will say too the the special effects not, not you know we're, jo- we're 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 joking here a yeah. little bit but 
the special effects in this movie are incredible, incredible. for 1988. Yeah. Uh, they're really good. And not only the practical, but like the way that they utilize like all the shadows in this oh, movie yeah. and the, and it's really good. We'll get to it in a second. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because, uh, I guess this is where Emmy has this like necklace she finds and then she's like talking to uh, Akiko and, yeah. and her dad about, all right, yeah, you should get together. Yeah. And then, uh, this is when they find this extra room. Because looking at the uh, the fresco over the monitor, I might be mixing it up slightly, but they well, they no, run they're... down and it's like, look at all these other paintings we found. They just appear. Not even they they just have the camera rolling, and uh, Taguchi's like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, all the paintings start like turning. Yeah, I'm pretty sure <laughs> it was yeah, like, yeah. yeah, they were like on the other walls and yeah. stuff, and they're realizing that it's like this one painting looked amazing and it was a very beautiful painting, and then it starts getting real weird, real dark, real yeah, quick. Yeah, it's like and and it's, it's turning. You're right. Yeah, yeah. 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 You don't realize like too until like later too when they and you're finding out that this is it's it is a lot of foreshadowing mm -hmm. of what is going to happen later in the movie but it gets real creepy actually I, it really does like there was some like, settling things they the start movie. talking about what's in the paintings it's like, oh, yeah. th and the way that this builds it's like oh there's like a locked door and then there's a fire that looks like hair is that hair and it's like oh now i see an eye and it's like building 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 mm -hmm. and then it's like oh there's a baby and it's crying and all this shit. And then fucking Asuka like freaks the yeah. fuck out. And right. He, yelling about the baby. Get yeah. the baby. Yeah, give me my baby back. Yeah. And they're like, what? Baby back, baby back, baby back ribs. ribs. I got my baby back ribs. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, and it's kind of that thing where it's like, if you if you really start thinking about how the movie's been presenting itself at this point, it's like, all right, now I kind of could see maybe something's happening with Asuka in this mm -hmm. house. Like, yeah. Once you start thinking about, well, she started, she's a prima donna, but she started acting weird as soon as she got here. Now oh. she's really being weird, screaming and shit. Yeah, 100%. So they so they take a bunch of Polaroids and they put it together and uh, Akiko and um, Kazu are like trying to figure it out. They're putting, they're putting right. it together of like the, the painting and they kind of deduce the fact that like, it's like you said, like it started out nice and then it got all fucked up and it's like clearly... The guy from the uh, uh, Ichiro for like was painting and like something he had like a mental yeah, breakdown. Right? His and creativity his, changed. His creativity said, changed. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, everybody's going to bed and stuff. They're and just sleeping in this man, fucking yeah, which, mansion. Like after this fucking giant piece of lumber fell down and almost killed this dude, they're so nonchalant. They're not wearing fucking shoes in the house and it's all yeah. dusty and gross and, and shit. Emmy's in the sleeping bag. You see her face poking out? Yeah. There's just like dirt everywhere. Everywhere. It's gross. At one point she's jumping on a fucking dirty ass bed with like feathers all yeah. over it. Yeah. Which I thought it was dust at first. I didn't realize it was feathers and I'm like, Ugh. oh God, she's just playing in like dust bunnies and stuff. And I was like, oh, it's feathers. But still, it's gross. There's a, they're 30 year old feathers or whatever it was. Like, what was it? Yeah. Or was yeah. it 30 years before yes. was when the guy died? Or was, mm -hmm. okay, well, I, I so couldn't remember closed. if it was that or the 1930s. I yeah. couldn't remember. So that's but, an asthma attack waiting to happen. Oh, yeah. They should know? all be like coughing. <laughs> yeah. They should all be wearing rebreathers <laughs> or at least N95 masks. Yeah. yeah. There's mildew. They're all going to have lung problems. Uh, they're after sleeping this. in it. They're not yeah. like staying at a hotel somewhere. Uh, yeah. Asuka should have that fucking mask on yeah, while like, she's sleeping. Yeah, pretty much. They're going to have. They're they're gonna get bronchitis, yes, or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the black mold's gonna fuck yeah. them up. Oh, yeah. That's why they go crazy. Yeah, yeah. they I, gotta call the landlord. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> scrape that. So they're all going to bed, and like, there's this weird scene where Taguchi's like, kind of bathing Asuka. He like, I don't like, think that's really her. I think that's a ghost. Yeah, that was weird though. No, it's way. her. Oh man, it's creepy it's, though that it's scene. Her. <laughs> it is so, her like at first until yeah, she does like shift. She but, gets like, possessed. Yeah. Right. That's that's the moment. He's yeah. like dumping water on her head. She's like clean washing her hair in a basin and she just stops. And this is where it gets like serious. Like it's been this weird kind of like lighthearted tone, and then all of a sudden, boom, we fucking just kick into spooky gear. Mm -hmm. It's like full ringing with his face just uh, distorts. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah. It's creepy. He like she like looks up and she's like, Where's my baby? Give me my baby back. Ribs. Ribs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and chases him basically out of the room and he fucking freaks out. Yeah. She goes on like a fucking rampage. The next scene, cut to the next scene, she's in the fucking grave, the little graveyard where he kicked the uh, the thing over. Yep. She's digging like a mad woman. Yeah, yeah. She pulls out a fucking casket. This little H.R. Giger casket yeah. like you were talking about. It totally about. looks like it. It does. It's, it's like rib 
like it looks like rib cage oh, kind of or it's something. It's biomechanical yeah, yeah. for sure. They, they even mention it in that scene when she's screaming about the paintings. They're yeah. like, oh yeah, one painting with a casket, but it yeah. looks small, like a baby's casket. Oh, that's where she goes. Oh, it was a baby. Yeah. 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 So as an audience member, you're just like, okay, this is now going down a hill for this group. Yeah. It, like it just takes that super dark turn, and like this is the first bit of practical effects that looks fucking incredible because mm-hmm. she opens this casket yeah. and takes this fucking baby out and like half its face is like mangled and like it like wakes up and like it goes like ah yeah and like it's so like comes out of oh, it yeah. and like, yeah. flies into the house and like kickstarts everything it, that part was the first thing that was like that was the most disturbing thing yeah i had seen in a movie for a good minute just yeah. because it is like it looks i don't i mean i don't know i'm sure they molded a kid or something for the but they, or sculpted it or yeah something, or something yeah. but this looks it looks like a real kid ugh. and it's creepy it just like opens its mouth and <laughs> oh it was creepy it creeped me out <laughs> everyone's freaked out emmy is like visibly shaking the baby is crying throughout the house yeah. to hear yeah. baby cries cut to the next morning where akiko is just driving down the road <laughs> and it's like doo, yeah, doo. yeah it's it actually pretty good it, editing it cuts yeah. to morning and it yeah. is like oh okay cool it's daytime now everybody yeah. everybody was fine she's going to get gas yeah this is where she meets mr yamamura right yeah. and he goes full uh old ralph on her uh, dude he's a death curse <laughs> don't go there he's japanese gramps dude yeah she kinda. also almost kills him with uh, where he's like under the car. Oh yeah, because the, the lever drops, like, drops the car on it, him, and he's like, because it's like a pneumatic jack. Yeah, and like the air, the pressure just gets like released, and the fucking car comes down. Yeah, on him. and she tries to save him, but she makes it worse first, and then she fixes it. <laughs> he's and like, then, no, the lever, uh, the lever, you're I'm getting crushed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he ends up. She she sees the amulet. Oh, he just like little thing he holds. He yeah, it's in the car, him. and he like pulls. It. He's like, ugh. Like, he's really mean at first, but yeah. he ends up being pretty cool. He gives her free gas, dude. Yeah, he's that's like, true. Save my life. You take all the gas yeah. you want. And she's like, all right, bye. Going to mommy a mansion. And he's like, wait, what? What yeah. you say? Yeah, he's like, wait, no. <laughs> and then yeah. She goes back. That's how we get him it, into the movie. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, we needed one more victim uh, slash helper because uh, <laughs> we cut back to this mansion and now Asuka is just, yeah, I guess we knew she was fully possessed, but here's uh, the verification of it because uh, Taguchi's like, all right, we're ready for the next part of the documentary, Asuka. You ready? She comes out. She might as well be floating. She comes in. Her hair is totally different. Yeah. She's, she's like, up, man. okay. She, like, she's hanging out with the casket. Yeah. Oh yeah. She, like, in the other like, room. She yeah. puts on the wheelchair. She puts it on the wheelchair. Now they're using the wheelchair as like a dolly. For yeah. The yeah. Camera. For filming. So Which so Akiko's like, cool. Emmy, go get the go get the wheelchair. So she goes and she grabs the casket. She's like, what the fuck is this? And Akiko comes in and they're trying to open it and they fuck it. They're trying really hard. They let go and this thing just shoots open and this fucking dead baby's in there. Yeah. And they just like freak out. <laughs> it's like, and they're like, why did you bring what this you, in? What here? is this? Yeah. Like they say to her, why did you bring this in? Dude, it's a hard cut and they're like, they, they yeah, another clo- hard cut. They close it and they're like burying it yeah, again. They're like yeah, yeah. You know, putting the, Dropping the, the, the like pedals. Dropping like salts and shit <laughs> on yeah, yeah. Like saying the last rites again and like burying oh, it. She's God. like, I don't even remember doing that. I have no idea. Maybe we should go back to Tokyo, they're like, yeah, maybe we should. Yeah, fucking Oscar freaks out and jumps in the car. She's like, see you guys, I gotta get out of here, and like crashes it into a fucking tree. Yeah. But it's, it's like, like it, it's as if this damn car just flew off the fucking like bridge or something, smashed into a median. And they're like, oh, we can't yeah. fix it. And like, oh, the air filters are. Like, oh, look, I tear the. <laughs> they tear the piece, and it's like a giant chunk of the engine that they just pull out God, of the thing. He's like, just came out in my yeah. hands. And they're like, well, we'll go find the, the what's his name guy down the road and we'll get a new piece. And he, yeah, he's down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, sure. Kiko's like, look, Kazu, there's a lot of fucking creepy shit happening. You got to hear me out. Like, I, there's some supernatural shit happening. Like, I can feel it. Yeah. I can feel it. And he's like, shut the fuck up. He's like, I don't believe you. Yeah. And there's, she there's, basically goes off on him oh, about yeah. how like, she, he never listens to Emmy and, or her and he's so fucking stupid that he can't see what's right in front of him because she like has feelings for him and he's like right. wait what what are you talking yeah. about <laughs> and then literally in the other room is supernatural fucking shit oh, yeah. <laughs> like taking place and he's sitting there and the fucking bitch he's like laying on the on the, on the the couch or whatever well, well, Asuka's, Asuka's knocked out she's got right. a bandage on her head they have her laid up inside Go she ahead. does yeah. the old undertaker sit up on the couch <laughs> and just you know dead eyed starts walking around and Emmy you know of course looks Ah, Asuka, are you okay? Gone from the spot. She fucking like disappears down a hallway. This yeah. scene is creepy. It's man. really creepy. Yeah. She follows her like, and they take a long time with this shot, and it's really effective because of that. Where like first you see Asuka like 
it's kind of like silly now, but like at the time it was, uh, I would imagine somewhat of a unique idea, but the way she's running kind of exorcist, like ring new style, like rapey, like moving her arms all over. Mm -hmm. Well, she's like moving like she's all fucked up yeah. and it's like, it whoa. adds to it. Yeah. Yeah. Anything with like that kind of movement is always like creepy to and me. In like movies, bug like. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's also like right around a corner, <laughs> you know, and Emmy's slowly turning that corner <laughs> and you don't know what you're going to see. And she doesn't see anything at first. So she has to keep going. It's like you, the detective. Tension just keeps building, building as you're building. like, all right, she's going to see her. No, she doesn't. Mm -hmm. Okay, she's going to see her. No, she doesn't. And it like keeps going. It's good. I think we have to ver we, we, we have to uh, differentiate here. Like, there is a ghost, Mamia. True. Lady right, Mamia yeah. is a ghost. Mm -hmm. But then there's also the shadow. There's like evil in the shadows of the house. Yeah. The shadows are all alive, At, technically. The shadow, yeah. Like the that. shadows like have an evil to them. Yeah. And um, they are an extension of Lady Mamia, or she uses them, but they're also independent, kind of. Yeah. And he, there's even a thing where he says later on, like, you can't bring light with you because. You'll make more shadows. Like you said, there's even shadows in your fist right now, like yeah, things like true. that. It's yeah. like, it's pretty creepy. It, but this the is, implications there are yeah. fucking terrifying. You're, you're, you have shadows on you, like you're dead. Yeah. Like, you, the, like that right there. You well, know? they could they cause some pretty gnarly fucking burns as yeah. we find out. Well, before we kind of really get into that, because yeah. uh, there's a really unique jump scare here, at least in my opinion, where she's just standing there. Again, she's still, she can't find Asuka. She's been following her for like five minutes, yeah. or at least it feels like five minutes. And there's like these the shadows on the wall. You don't think anything of it, mm -hmm. but then they just start moving in a way that takes you off guard, and it just like sends a uh, yeah. chill down your spine. Dude, they start like swirling the room, yeah, and they're, they're like hands like, coming out. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. That's what I was saying. Like the, the the practical effects that they use for the shadows in this fucking movie are awesome. Really, this, smart. these are not computer generated. These are like honest to goodness like cutouts of something. And some of there's even some people as acting as the shadows too. But like. It's really fucking cool, especially the scene we're going to get to where Asuka's running down the hallway. Emmy runs out, and she, she's like, oh, my God, there's ghosts or something. Yeah. A g -g 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 ghost. <laughs> right, yeah, she runs out to her dad. You're right, and, like, they embrace, and that's, like, right after he's having the argument with Aki. So it kind of, like, gets him off the hook for a moment. Yeah, and he's like, we'll wait for them to all come out. What part of the shadows are alive? Don't you <laughs> understand, Dad? Ugh. And he's like, you're fucking crazy. Cut to Taguchi, like, pulling a fucking, like, robe. Uh, yeah, like a medical wrapping like, or yeah. something. Pulling something out, and he's like, he's like, oh, I wonder where this goes. Which is a really creepy scene, because, like, the door, like, creaks open, and Asuka, like, falls out. And he's like, he's that like, got, he's got like, me. what are you doing? Yeah. And she, like, crawls out and, like, lays on her back, and he's like, come on, we gotta, we gotta go. Like, are you all right? We're going back to Tokyo. All of a sudden, this fucking giant shadow just starts rearing up behind him and, like, grows the whole side of the fucking like a monster. Of the mansion wall. Mm -hmm. And Asuka's freaked out because she's not possessed anymore. Taguchi turns around and this fucking shadow like grabs him by the ankle and like grabs his body and starts burning him yeah. from the inside out. The smoke. Yeah, he just starts glowing. Like it's <sighs> it's it, it, like embers, like coal embers. It's crazy. The, the way that they do these effects are really cool because like there's smoke effects, but then there's like pieces of the actors that are like honest to goodness like glowing like yeah. bright red and pink and shit like that and they have like lights exploding just on impact of the shadow yeah. to really oh, sell the yeah, effect that, yeah. when you see the hand going across and each light bulb blows out each yeah. it, that was really cool oh yeah when Asuka's running down the, the hallway all the lights are blowing out and like again like the hand it's a practical hand shadow yeah, oh, like yeah. going yeah. across the, the wall which is really cool because it's like intercut between him basically getting killed by this shadow <laughs> while she's running yeah. for dear life it's it's intense. So you don't know what's ha so you see that he's smoking and shit. All of a sudden, he's screaming and he's burning and all this stuff. Oscar runs back in the fucking room. This guy is bisected. He's yeah. melted in half. You could say he was half the man he used to be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he, quite literally, everything else was left behind. Yeah. There is a pile of fucking goo with his legs, and he's crawling yeah. across the floor. Th this scene goes on for like two minutes of him crawling towards Asuka, and it's really fucking creepy, man. Yeah, and she has to beat him to death to, with a to wrench. get him the, to stop crawling after her. With it's a like, giant wrench. Yeah. It's, it's a really good scene. It's really, that was actually like, 
the 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 way that the uh because he's he's you know i guess he's like is inside the ground or something the way they did it but yeah. then he oh, starts yeah, crawling yeah. Yeah. and his his legs but it's like bottom half of his legs are all that's left of the other side and the rest is just a puddle and they keep looking back and like yeah. it's all like melted it's, shit. he's like pieces of them are kind of dripping out and stuff it's a really great <sighs> effect and he's just like oh <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's awesome and it's sad too because Oscar has to beat his fucking head yeah. in yeah because now he's like I guess a zombie kinda, or something yeah. kinda he's he's dead kinda I but she's well, I also too like I'd be like stop you, <laughs> I'm gonna just put you out of your misery but you're creeping me out he, also he's yelling <laughs> for her so I guess he's conscious but I, it is kinda like he is definitely kind of a zombie yeah. right? I don't know if he's a zombie I think because he's just undead. melted he's just melted yeah. and still kicking a little bit because when she yeah. beats his fucking head in he doesn't come back no, no. they no. show him later and he's turned pretty green quickly that's the only yeah. reason why I'm like maybe he was a zombie yeah <laughs> <laughs> Without skipping a beat, Oscar freaks out. She runs into another room, and this desk opens, and all these red balls fall out. And uh, she gets scared as she turns around, and the fucking axe that we saw from before goes uh, and like turns because she like hits it, and yeah. it like and it starts to fall, and it turns right towards her. <laughs> well, she falls. She slips on one of the oh balls God, onto dude. the wheelchair. Onto the wheelchair. Dude, yeah. she, so her ass sits in the wheelchair, and this fucking uh, hundred pound battle axe oh. comes and just fucking. Bam, right in the middle of her head and like pushes her across the room. It's and just great. drips blood. Yeah, it yeah. is great. It is <laughs> almost as good as the pipe scene from uh Evil Dead Trap. Okay, yeah. I was thinking Where they all come through the walls. Sure. Yeah. Or was it Friday too when he actually gets the guy in the wheelchair down the stairs? Oh, that's, that's probably the, better. Machete but... to the face yeah, and then yeah. he falls down the stairs <laughs> in the wheelchair. <laughs> but this is definitely like a, a 10 minute stretch of this film that like we were talking about. Up until this point, I mean, we kind of know on some level it's going to get where it needs to be because yeah. of what because of the information we have now, this many years removed. Yeah. But like, yeah, that first like 40 minutes is like pretty tame in the scheme of things. And then you just get whacked like this guy's body melting. Holy shit. Yeah. This woman getting creamed in the head with an axe. Holy yeah. shit. In the span of like five or 10 minutes. It only gets fucking weirder. Oh, yeah. Because this is the jump off point. Now now it's no holes barred because Emmy, Emmy uh, Kazu and uh, Akiko uh, hear the screams and they come in. And they fucking see they see uh, Taguchi on the ground and he's all fucked up. Um, and you actually see his face from getting beat in with the with the wrench too. Yeah, then Part of like, it's just caved in. Oh, it's yeah. just caved yeah. in. They throw a fucking sheet over it. <laughs> they go in the other room because they see like like fire, like yeah. lights yeah. happening. And you're like, what the fuck is that? They go into the room. And Asuka's in the wheelchair. She looks like a giant fucking melted puddle of ice yeah. cream, like 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 uh, killer clouds, dude. It, dude, it's like glowing, yeah. and then she's just melting. It's crazy looking. She was just melted, like, and you couldn't even really tell what she. You could see like her leg, kinda, and her <laughs> hands. I think everything else is just like it's like wax melting. It was like it a was, street uh, street trash special. Dude. Yeah. You gotta like make out everything else she's like sitting on, like yeah. the melted axe in her head. It's yeah. creepy. Oh, also too, uh, what's his name? shows back up the the gas station guy Yamamura Mr. Yeah. Yamamura yeah. shows up and sees and that's before they actually discover the bodies but he shows back up and he's like don't go back in that house he's like look what you did you knocked down the fucking yeah, he's like, oh, did it. Yeah. yeah and he's like I didn't do it <laughs> <laughs> those were for snails obviously yeah. from Dungeons and Dragons that was yeah. his memorial to protect this place from Lady Momia he's yeah. like why did you touch that and he's like we didn't I don't what are you talking about uh, yeah. the guy who did it's dead we haven't discovered it yet <laughs> he's like this is this is to keep them at bay and it's like ah oh, man <laughs> well, <laughs> that one thing of rocks they're like freaking out at the dead body you know, rightfully so, but yeah, he comes in Yamamura and he's like assessing the damages. Like, all right, what do we got to do now? Yeah, huh? yeah, and he knows what's up. He is, he's no joke. And he's like, you got to get the fuck out of this house. <laughs> and without skipping a beat, uh, dude, the hair starts coming up the wall. Oh man. Yeah. So like, this is so great too. And, and Emmy's uh, just like, <clears throat> so we didn't, we have to mention one thing real quick. So, so, um, Emmy's mother's dead or gone or something. I think she's, she's right. passed yeah, away. Yeah. 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 Um, and she wears like a dress for that. Her, that's her mother's to like honor her and stuff like that. And she wants to go to be her mom. P.S. Um, so they're there and, uh, Lady Mamia, like, poses as her mom she comes like this shadow comes up the wall you see the hair blowing right. and shit mm -hmm. and emmy's like mom is that you and she like follows the shadow like into the bedroom and fucking straight up gets possessed yeah <laughs> and that's a creepy ass scene because uh kazu yamamura and akiko run up 
and they're like, come out of there. I mean, like, what are you doing? And her voice changes and shit. Mm-hmm. And Yamamura's like, who, who are you? They fucking shine the light. The fucking flashlight yeah. explodes. Her face like turns black and has all these cracks oh, in yeah, it. Oh, yeah, the cracks. And oh. he holds the amulet and it burns and his it burns hand. burns his hand. That was crazy the way her, her face cracked up. Yeah. Because it's like an animated kind of thing, it's but it was so cool. really creepy looking because yeah. she just had it. Her face was just blank. Yeah. yeah. And then it just turns into the cracks. It was really good. There's also like these... Um, not portals, but like walls of like magic or poltergeist shit. Oh yeah! And when you go through them, lightning, these, yeah, this, like lightning happens with these really cool fucking it's like lightning roto effects. Darkness, like yeah. The, it's just a sheet of darkness that yeah. they can't get at into or whatever. But the shit like electrocutes you and like burns you and shit. Like yeah, that. yeah. You have to like get through it like a fucking poltergeist portal, like through the door. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is when when Kazu goes in and <laughs> like launches his ass. <laughs> he gets yeah. The oh, room. he yeah. goes in and he and he disappears for a second and he flies out and just hits the wall and it's whole. It's actually <laughs> like it made me that part made me chuckle real quick. <laughs> he's ejected because I did like not 20, expect it. No. Yeah, he's like ejected twenty five miles an hour into that it's fucking fast. wall. It's fast. He <laughs> flies and I'm like, oh, I thought he was dead at first. I was like, oh wow, and then he's just like, Ugh, and he just gets knocked out. But oh. he smashes into the wall. And it's he, like, even Yamamura like the fucking talisman gets all hot and everything yeah. and he has to drop it it's pretty intense and then they're just like oh emmy's possessed and she's in the house somewhere we well, don't know where now she's gone they took her and yeah. and kazu's like what the fuck yeah and then yamura's like let me tell you a story about what happened in this house <laughs> yeah <laughs> the plot number she gave you an hour ago which is even darker than you've already than you thought yeah right yeah. Because he sits down, he takes a fucking drink of his little whiskey uh, f- bottle that he's got, and he's like, yeah, so uh, so here's the deal. So Ichiro was a uh, painter, and he painted a lot of stuff, and uh, him and his wife had a kid, and uh, he was going to paint all of this wonderful things of his kids growing up. Well, one day, uh, Lady Mimia went down to the uh, furnace for whatever reason and opened it up, and uh, baby Mimia went in there and fucking lit on fire. Right, because they like to play in there or something, and she didn't realize he was in there. Okay. And, turn- and threw the switch? Yeah, so this is this is the part that I was actually talking about earlier was like, I have something to say about that. Okay. And I was like, I don't want to, but so what he says is that, uh, she went downstairs to turn on the furnace and they're like, well, why is that bad? And he's like, well, because the baby who had just learned to walk was playing in the furnace. So, and that's, I'm like, okay, okay, that's fucked up. But later on, you see this furnace. And this thing, first off, uh, Akiko tries to open it and it, and takes, it takes her like 10 minutes to open yeah. this furnace. So, and the baby is a baby. It's a. It's like a <laughs> two-year-old. Yeah, it's, it's not like, like Superman. It doesn't have superpowers. Yeah. It's so a baby. I'm like, how the fuck did this baby get into this furnace? Unless it was. And open? I'm not laughing at a baby. That's horrible. No, it's so had, messed up. No, yeah. But this somehow this baby gets into this furnace and gets into the furnace in a way that the mother couldn't know that the baby right, was well, in the right. furnace. Which I'm just like. Did the dad put it in there? Yeah, the, the, the unnamed and father? And it's like, I'm going to go play in the furnace. Also, too, this furnace is underground yes. in a, in like a weird kind of secret room almost. It's like this sub-basement. And it's like 100 feet from that thing. This baby had to be like, doot, 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 like, like Rugrats. Like I'm imagining like a Rugrats <laughs> baby, episode. They like, baby Bates they like in there. Yeah, yeah. and it, it takes the fucking uh, screwdriver out of his diaper and yeah, yeah does the and whole so, thing. So they, they didn't check to make sure like one, their kid, where's our kid? I can't, first of all, I think like a mom would be like, hey, I can't find my kid. Sure. Right. First, before she's like, it's, it's cold. I'm going to turn on the furnace and I haven't seen my child in four hours. It's not even What's that, that screaming? <laughs> it's it, it's not even that cut and dry because like it gets caught. It the baby gets caught in there. She turns it on and then like she knows that the baby's in there and then goes in. She yeah. like, loses an eye and she gets all fucked up yeah. too. She lives, but the baby right. dies. The baby dies yeah. and then and then that's the thing is now she uh, she goes crazy. Yeah, and starts finding kidnapping babies and throwing them into the furnace to find more playmates which, for the baby, which which is crazy. I, I 100% yeah, which is agree like, that the setup to get there makes zero fucking sense. But, it's, but I it's like a the great story. It is. Exactly. I like story. the legend of what it ends up yeah. being. But it's like, yeah, how the fuck did that the, even start? The payoff for that later, which we'll get yeah. to, is like holy shit. Right. That was yeah, good. it's worth the stupidity of it. Well. 
Yeah, I, I just don't know. The, yeah, the logistics, the logistics of a baby playing in a furnace yeah. are just what the hell. The to logistics me. of that Ichiro particular put her furnace. In yeah. Put the baby in yeah. there. Like who put the baby? I could in understand there. if like they were like saying like, oh, they left it open and the baby just wandered in or yeah. something. Like, but the thing yeah. is too, also not for another. But this furnace is not like a. It's not on the floor. It's no. good. It's higher than the baby. The baby would have to climb, pull itself up, yeah. open a, a hundred pound metal door. <laughs> it's like a fucking night <laughs> of the demons crematory. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. what it looks like. Yeah. Exactly. So that's the only, and also too, the other thing is the painting that they show where they say it looks like a locked door. It's the, it's the furnace door. It's a little right. door. He right. painted the furnace door on the thing. And it's like, when you see the door, it's creepy. Because yeah. you're like, oh. That's and you're set putting everything awesome. together. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. So the villagers, just real quick, just to end the story. The villagers like corner her in the basement and she fucking threw herself yeah. into the furnace uh, and that's how she died. Yeah. Kind of a Freddy like, Krueger thing, but not really. It's a Freddy <laughs> Krueger thing. Almost, yeah. We'll come it back is... to a Freddy Krueger thing later. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Yamamura's like, it's the power of the fucking mind, man. The lights aren't going to do shit. You can't fight this with your fist. You got to do it with your mind. Yeah. Right. He's like, squeeze this bottle. And, <laughs> and Kazu's like, what are you the, f- what the fuck are you this talking about? when it about? goes yeah. full anime for a few minutes. <laughs> oh, it gets weird, yeah. It's full anime, dude, because because <laughs> Yamamura's like singing this song and he's getting in his zen spot. And then he and like- it's a full song. It's a full song. Yeah. He ends up squishing this whiskey bottle, not not a glass like, bottle, like by like the way. not breaking it, like literally distorting reality yeah, and like it. bending this bottle with like finger marks and shit. And he's so proud of himself when he does it. Uh, power over mind. Yes, yes, is the point. Yeah, and then he's just like, I know where she is, <laughs> and rips the floor Come open. On. Yeah, oh yeah, he knows where that <laughs> trap door is that yeah. has green shit coming out of it. But that's also my thing. Like, how did that baby? <laughs> Because it's also it's just a floor. There's no yeah. like handle. They don't no. really know. He, he knew exactly where it was too. And yeah. it's like, did you like? I don't. Who yeah. are you again, yeah. sir? Was there a plot point with this? Not that we necessarily do need it, but was there some additional dialogue that explained his role better? Other than he's just the hermit that lives kind of close. I thought for sure he was going to be Ichiro. I thought he was too. That's like what 100%. I actually really yeah. thought it was going to be. Because he's even got like old makeup on to yeah, make him yeah. look even older. Um, so they go down into the into this basement, and I, I, he fucking goes full Zelda Rubenstein, dude. He's like, go yeah. in in the light. He's like, I'm going to go in and get Emmy, and you just wait here. He goes through this fucking like force field and gets burnt to shit. He, he has Emmy in his hand. Uh, yeah, he gets burnt to shit. His fucking whole head, like the hair's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's come, rough. Dude, he comes out. He puts Emmy down, not a scratch on her. All of a sudden, he just starts fucking melting real time. Yeah. His, his face is burning. His fucking eyes are popping and white shit's coming out. It's like a reverse Uncle Frank. Oh my God, man. The skin is fucking uh, just (laughs) falling off his head. It's It's funny though, Kieran made a funny point earlier though that it's like, okay, that's all like well and good, but they keep cutting to the characters running away going, no! And then cutting back to them more shit falling off him. He's like, uh, like, it's cool. Just get out of here. Just get get the hell out of here. And he's melting. And then they're like, Mr. Yamamura. And then they cut to him and he's like worse. And then they're like, Mr. Yamamura, and he's like a skeleton. Like they keep cutting back to them, like going and then like the hands like explode yeah. the skeletal hands, and then they they finally do inch towards the door, but then they stop and still look, and now he's a crumbling <laughs> skeleton, like where he's turned into like ash dust. It's almost like he bone. bought them no time. Yeah, they waited the whole time they to watch it. his full. To, to be fair, I probably would have watched too. It's yeah. probably pretty crazy sight this, actually. This guy goes from skin to literal bones that like get crispy and fall yeah. apart. Yeah, imagine if that happened to me right now. Would you would you leave? Or would no, you I'd just, probably be like, oh my God, I'm this like, is incredible. It's okay, just get out of here, guys. <laughs> and I'm just the ghosts like, are here. slowly yeah, yeah. disintegrate. That happened to Connor once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they, well, On he's still, set? He's still there man oh wow well, yeah <laughs> So now uh, he's like the mad dash to the exit yeah. now that they saw the exploding skeleton trick and uh <laughs> yeah they kind of get there but uh oops the house caught up or the ghost or whatever you want to call it the shadows the shadows yes and uh we escaped but where the fuck's my daughter she literally like disappears in Aki's arms well she try- turns into something, I yeah, think. Yeah, 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 they're, yeah. They're trying to bust down the door, and they're like, "Oh, great, there's a way out." Oh, Dad's they- power, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, like, <laughs> Dad's power. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the moonlight's out. 
So, uh, so she's like, okay, Akiko's like, okay, Emmy, stay in the moonlight because the shadows are going to get you. So they're fucking taking forever to bust down this door and Kazu finally gets it down. But the shadows cover the moon. But the right. shadow, the yeah. shadows cover the moon. It's really cool. Emmy gets possessed yeah. by Mamiya again and she like, her whole face fucking turns and yeah. then like, she just gets taken into the darkness. She's like full on ring. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. yeah. She's got like the white face and the fucked up eye. And Akiko and, and uh, Kazu run out, but then Kazu runs back in. We don't see him again. Yeah. He's like, I go, I'm going to go find my daughter. He goes uh, in through the electricity uh, uh, pitch black yeah, oh, yeah. portal, whatever. Oh, he, but also one the Craig T. Nelson portal. Yeah, a quick thing. He uh, he grabbed uh, Mr. Yamamura's uh, amulet, mm-hmm. which oh, the yeah. amulet that Mr. Yamamura had, he left it when he went down into the basement or whatever. But Kazu grabbed it. Yes, and he has it in his pocket. <laughs> But this was like a couple minutes ago. Yeah, in case you forgot, that's that is important for the yeah. ending. Yeah. So now we get our our final showdown, guys, because uh, Akiko puts on um, Emmy's mother's dress. Mm-hmm. She's like getting in the fucking zone, dude. She's putting up her hair with the bow and all that yeah, shit. Yeah, because even yeah. like Yamora, Yamamara, he uh, he explains earlier that whoa, you're not the real mother. Well, I don't know if this is gonna work because there's got to be a connection between the daughter and, and the mother. She and loves her like a daughter, and she wants right. to be her mother, but. Kazu never pulled the fucking right. trigger. That's yeah. like what all the tension is throughout the, the movie between them, the, those three. Exactly. But yeah, to your point, that's why she's doing all that to kind of like, all right, I'm trying to follow what this guy suggested yeah. as closely as I can. And yeah, then she starts making her way down there. And, and what, what, but we got to do one major thing first. We got to go fucking dig up that baby one oh, more time. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because they reburied the baby. I forgot about that. Yeah. Right. But that the ghost does keep saying, uh, the, I want my baby back, baby back, baby back. I want back my ribs. baby back. Yeah. yeah licking their chops the entire Entire time, uh, but yeah, she she barbecues on. Pulls that lump of shit out of the ground, <laughs> opens that would, it up. Could you imagine if the ending of the movie is like they give her the baby and she's like, "Oh, I didn't want you, gross." Yeah. Yeah. No, know. and then a Chili's worker comes up. They're like, "I know what you want." Yeah. And like, yeah, so Bryce rack of ribs. Fat yeah. bastard just walks out dancing. <laughs> yeah. I want your baby. Uh, I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back ribs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! I just watched that recently it's, too. It's yeah, classic. Dude, it holds yeah, up, I love man. I love Spyro Shag Me. That's great. The first and second one for sure. Yeah, um, I like Gold. I Member still like all three know. equally, but Member. we'll eventually do that fucking episode where we're we just gonna, talk about all. Three we're gonna movies. do that episode and we're gonna watch them all in succession, and then we'll have that. I, we'll I, have that conversation I, I again. Do it yeah. once a year. So okay. okay. All right. So Akiko's got the 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 uh, casket, and mm-hmm. she goes downstairs to the um to the to the furnace room, and she's basically calling out uh, um Lady Mom. Mamiya, and she's uh, and the fucking floor like falls yeah. in it's like Ghostbusters. It's yeah. really cool, but that effect looks fucking great. And like, there's also Mamiya's like also like pushing like wind at her, right? So like yeah. from where the furnace is, there's like this wind constantly blowing. So she ties this casket up with like a. a extension cord and like throws it across the hole and then makes the jump yeah so that she, part's crazy yeah it's yeah. fucking nuts so, crawls up ah. yeah and it's so cool because the ghost like grabs the casket and it like pulls it through the door and she like ties it off real quick to like this giant like ship uh uh like um I don't know, a table or something. Yeah. And it fucking pulls it like right through the door and like explodes. Yeah, blows it up. Yeah. So they get to the furnace. And again, like Kieran said, this is honking ass fucking furnace. Yeah. It takes her it takes her like 40 seconds to open it's the a fucking long door. Scene. She is like, and and okay, maybe this thing is filled with rust by 30 this time. years. It's sure. 30 years of rust. But still, I don't see a baby opening that furnace, even if it was a brand new stainless no. steel <laughs> furnace or Just whatever. Just to I don't push know, the like, lever takes yeah, a lot of effort. Up. No kid's going to do that. That door is like. Over a hundred pounds yeah. to like open. Oh yeah, you know what easily, I mean. You easily. need momentum to even I'd get that thing moving. I'd have a problem moving. probably opening yeah. the furnace. You know. Yeah, for sure. So, so Emmy's in there, right? And then all of a sudden she goes up in flames and you're like, oh my fucking god! Yeah. Emmy just went up in flames. I thought that was the end of her, honestly. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. But she's not screaming. And you're like, what the fuck? So of course it's it's the whole thing with the geek goes like, okay, power power of the mind. I'm gonna this is just a hallucination. I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna get her, and she does. Which is it's fucking creepy. Shot though. amazing, by it's, the way. The yeah. way that they do the fire effects around them. Again, yeah. no digital effects here, guys. I don't know how they did this. It looks great, though. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm guessing they must have just had like a wall of fire kind of thing, yeah. and then just had her on the other side of it or something. But it's it's really. It's scary it, because it, it's yeah. coming out of the furnace. You see, and she's like when, climbing through. She's like, ah, yeah. Like, yeah. And when you do see Emmy, the like, like you said, I thought it that was it. Oh, yeah. I thought you, and I was like, because I don't know. I, I'm thinking this movie. They they might pull no punches. You know, yeah. Just kill everybody. Who knows? But 
Yeah, it's scary at first. It really is. Like, it caught me completely off guard. It's fucking freaky as hell, man. So she ends up getting her out of there. Right, they touch hands, and then the illusion disappears. Yes. Mm-hmm. And they come out, and they're like, oh, great, you, you know, you're fine. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> And here comes fucking Lady Mamia, dude. She fucking comes out like, I like don't a know, fucking like, angel, like, yeah. like a House of the Dead villain. She comes out, man. Yeah. So she floats in, and Aki's yelling, you know, because she's talking about Emmy. This isn't your child. It's so good, dude. And then these uh, talking about Freddy Krueger, these fucking souls, these baby souls, suckling souls. These this fuck- is the MDU, by the way. We, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we haven't mentioned that yet. Movie dumpster universe. Yes. Somehow, but yeah, all the fucking babies of the MDU it's are the, trying to get out of this ghost. It's the prepubescent mutant ninja babies, dude. Yeah. They're inside her, uh, inside Lady Mamia. Yeah. You got the fucking suckling. You got uh, the 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 being. You got orca baby. Orca baby. The circus peanuts yep. in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> All trying to escape. They're all trying to escape, but they, it's the practical effects are so awesome. No, like, it again, is. It's like the Freddy soul. It is. Right? That's what I'm yeah. The fucking heads are popping. It looks like a pimple coming out with the with the baby face. They're all crying all over. Oh, yeah, it was. It, a, it's this last thing of effect is the best. Fucking Supreme rad. Great. Her fucking her neck comes out. Her face. Dude, talk about Peter distorts. Jackson. Her hands grow. She looks like a fucking like a bow. Like oh, a, like yeah. a, like yeah. a tyrant or literally something. Yeah. ghost version. Yeah, yeah. We need that now. I know we're like uh, how many years. Are Removed from this film, but can we get some ghost Resident Evil yeah. shit? Somebody, and then, and then it's, it's crazy. Kazu comes in in a helicopter and yeah. throws throws uh, Akiko the rocket launcher. He's like, "You're our Amazon, Akiko!" And then she blows the yeah. shit out Do of her. Do it now, Aki. <laughs> right and it just yeah. and then the fucking rocket comes out and goes, Chung, and the yeah. camera angle changes three times, <laughs> yeah, and then it explodes, and it's just feet, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> the best ending. So, uh, so yeah, so the, so they're trying to. I don't know what battle this ghost and the ghost is trying to take Emmy and she's like, leave Emmy alone. You know what it's like to be a mother. She's, she's, she's not really my child, but I love her like a child. So right. leave her alone. She's and sucking up Emmy with this like electricity, electricity. ghost yeah. powers. Yeah, it's it's really cool. cool. All the, again, all the roto light effects are fucking incredible. This is also where the, the Aqua Teen explosion. Oh is, yeah. Where she, oh, she throws, throws a, a chair, chair at her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it just explodes. Like it's, it looks like Aqua Teen kind of, it's but it's awesome. like good. Akiko's a fucking badass, dude. She picks up a yeah. pitchfork and she's ready to go stab this ghost in the face. <laughs> Doesn't work. But Doesn't work. No, it's a good but. try. So Emmy gets up and, uh, well, she does the thing that I think Akiko was going to try to do in the first place. She opens up the coffin and takes the baby out. And she literally goes over to the fucking ghost and says, here's your baby. Now, right. go, now get the fuck mm-hmm. out of here. The adrenaline took over on Akiko. One, yeah. Once Emmy got attacked, she forgot about, you know, plan A. The maternal mm-hmm. instinct kicked yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, the, the ghost mother... You know, they actually changed the facial expression, which was, I was kind of surprised they even bothered, but it actually starts to look a little bit more solemn. Yeah. Yeah. Almost like Henrietta in Evil Dead 2. A little bit, yeah. When when What's Her Face starts singing to her, and then Ash cuts Mm -hmm. her head off. A little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, And she takes the the casket, and uh, they almost like become one, and there's this massive, like, holy, like, kind of thing almost, like a glow. It's really beautiful because, like, they turn, it turns back into the same, uh, visual as the as the projector the, yeah oh and right, she has yeah. the baby she's holding they're in like gold and there's like spirits like flying around him and stuff also it's like screaming the entire time and the second it grabs the baby like it goes incredibly silent like, the music yeah. cuts out and <laughs> it's really well done it's really creepy too because it's just like shit just stops the way know? it's holding it to the hand the fingers too like mm. like cradle the baby Ugh. and it's just like, it really was long. like upsetting but also it, it, you felt better yeah. i mean it, it's it's a uh cathartic i guess yeah. it's like yeah. it, but it's sad you're this this wailing beast mother monster it finally gets the baby back ribs and <laughs> And and it's and the power of love fixes everything and and they fly into heaven or yeah. something literally you know? yeah, yeah. And, they, and, and fucking Huey Lewis and the news kicks up yeah <laughs> actually uh, Rex Viper kicks in <laughs> oh, okay power of love obviously and that's yeah. the power of mom yeah the Nintendo power of love yeah. Oh my no, God. but it's like it's the it really is a, power of love, and, and that's a, you know that was the thing too is so that happens and you know. Uh, Emmy and Akiko see it and they kind of get out and everything. Yeah, they're like and they're at, they hug. They're at yeah. peace now and they're like, okay, we're good. We we the, we reunited them. They're all good to go. We're getting the fuck out of here. And then you know, where's Daddy? Yeah, and yeah. she's like, I'll tell you later. Yeah, because she's like, oh, he's, <laughs> she's 
It's fucking a burning hot yeah. dog. <laughs> like, <laughs> Dude, remember what happened to Mr. Yamamura? This is yeah. happening. To, that oh. happened to Dad. I, I feel like this was planned from the beginning, but I could also see this like in any other movie being the thing they add on after the fact because yeah. audiences are like, what the fuck? Well, yeah, test you, audience. Yeah. yeah, well, they forgot to put the scene in where uh, Akiko puts the two fucking Mo discs in. Yeah. And, and <laughs> yeah. opens yeah. up the door. And, and opens up the door, or in this case, puts him in a fucking Schiffer robe or whatever yeah. he's in. The countdown timer. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the train that they have to use to get off or something, right, right. you know, whatever it is. Yeah, the, the, the last second boss battle. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah but they, they, they put those those Mo discs and they yeah. keep coming up and then suddenly this cabinet starts shaking and this motherfucker falls out just covered in dust like... Like yeah. Gripping the amulet, and Did it's I like, make it? and it's like, you went in to save your daughter, and you chicken shitted yourself, and just sat in a fucking closet. Is that what happened? I, I don't thought, know. I thought maybe he went in and just got trapped immediately, he but he didn't get there? killed or something. Yeah, like I thought yeah. it was like because when he went in, it was just it was just that power, you know, that was like keeping him out. Yeah. So I thought maybe the monster threw him in a closet, and he was just locked him in. Yeah, and then <laughs> after it was all done, he gets out and he goes, "Oh crap! I had this amulet. It saved me it from." Hurt him. from from you know whatever the force was or something, yeah, you know? the shadow element of yeah, it. Yeah, I don't know. That's what I thought. Also, I like he's it. completely surrounded in shadow. Yeah, they do yeah. talk about, and that's that. a lot better than he's just a piece of shit. <laughs> like, he goes in a <laughs> well, well, like, like it couldn't kill him, right? So, yeah. So he because he had the amulet, so right. like, oh, we're gonna stuff you in a closet, like a fucking, a, yeah, like, like, like a, bully. a bully in a locker. Yeah. Well, he uh, comes out like, whoa, oh, oh, Emmy, and they run over. Yeah. Like, oh, thank God, oh, we're a family again, and they walk off. Yeah, yeah, and it ends, it's a happy ending, which I wasn't expecting. No. It, every time I watch horror movies, that's one thing like I don't really enjoy about horror movies all the time yeah. is that it's almost always an unhappy ending. It's always like, oh, the person you were cheering Depending. for lives and then all of a sudden they die halfway yeah. through the ending of it or something. Uh, yeah, the, tr the, the the tropes. If yeah, you know. I don't remember what, I was watching a movie one time where it was like they get away on snowmobiles and then they're getting out and it's like one of those horror, you know, mutant family or something and they get out and there's wires and it cuts all their heads off at the very end oh, of the movie. Oh man, it's probably I don't Kills of Eyes 2 or some I shit. I don't remember what movie it was. They're in like snow and they get out, and then they're like, we made it, yeah. And then they just slice their heads off, and that's the end of the movie. A bleak ending. Yeah, yeah it's always yeah. like that sometimes. And it was a family? I don't remember. It's not Dead I just Snow, remember. is it? Maybe? But with the where there's like Nazi zombies? I don't know. Oh, okay. Maybe it was. Because maybe it wasn't like- they like, fucked up at the they end. They just forgot to remove up the and they trap. Yeah, because it was like barbed wire or something oh, yeah. on the thing, so they just like- I know what you mean, though. Sliced yeah, up or whatever, yeah. but I don't know. But that's why I, like, sometimes I like- you know when the movie ends good and yeah. ends ends well. Oh sure. You know. So the S rank appears and, and yeah. yeah, and you unlock. It's like a, what a tough guy. I don't yeah. think he got S rank when half the characters die. Well, yeah. yeah. So we're, we're still unlocking the unlimited they, rocket launcher though, right? Yeah, they save too many times, so they got an E rating. <laughs> it's like you saved three times. You used a first aid spray too. Yeah. Are you fucking. <laughs> I think that's what I got when I beat it. I yeah. Beat it. So. It's cool too because they show the mansion and it's like this is the fucking shot from Resident Evil. Exactly, of the, it, like it's the shot Literally. of the Spencer Mansion. Yeah, the trees, like it's it's the way, shrouded in trees slightly. It's a little thing. bit more castle esque, but from that top view, yeah, dude, it, it looks like the mansion. Yeah, well, oh yeah, like for the credits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and what's cool is you watch the whole credits and at the very end, the whole fucking mansion collapses. Yeah. And I watched. Oh, because, I missed that. Okay. Yeah, I watched to the end because I was like. Is there? Are they going to do some Something, sort of thing? Because it stayed on that picture. It yeah. didn't. It didn't go cut, black. And yeah. then at the end, it just collapses. I blew it. Which also was that a miniature? I'm pretty. Or, yeah. Because it the the collapsing is very. Uh, it looks is very convincing. It looks okay. incredible. You see bricks and everything like like breaking apart, and the it it looked real. Yeah. I don't know. It looks really fucking cool. Uh, yeah. I will see that in the edit when I'm working on this episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then, you know, Chris and Barry and Jill and Rebecca, they're all flying yeah. away in the oh, right. helicopter. That's how you get that S rank. Yeah. Yeah. They're the best ending. Yeah. Barry's like looking, he's like, oh, <laughs> my gun. <laughs> <laughs> and Rebecca's taking a nap. Yeah. So last time when we when you were on the show, uh, we did it. We, we usually do, is it on the shelf or is it in the dumpster? But it's special because it's trick or trash. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So what we do is what treat is this in your Halloween candy bag? Oh, Okay. This is a good one, then. The, yeah. yeah, you know, this is like a peanut butter cup or yeah. a or a blow pop <laughs> they, or something. Oh, you know? Yeah, it's man. it's a high ranking. Yeah, uh, something maybe a Kit Kat. Ooh, maybe you know what? Maybe a full size bar. Yeah. I don't know. I, I it's think good. So. This Choices. is a good movie. You know. Yeah. 
Yeah, I would say I would definitely give it a peanut butter cup, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, if I were to, and I mean, I, I don't know, if, I guess like, wait, that might be insensitive because if people have peanut allergies, you I can't mean, have a peanut butter cup. <laughs> it's a blow them. pop. The, the a, peanut butter cup has been <laughs> one of the ones we've used in yes. the past. To okay. Out, all right. Highly That's like then the yes, star, I, yeah. I would say, yeah, a peanut butter cup, in my opinion, this yeah. is definitely, it was really good. I, I, the, the, the special effects really were incredible for the time. These are special effects that are on par with really any classic horror film of that time. I would even say like the thing or something like that. They're about as good. Um, The thing might be a little, like it it was a little more because it was like stop motion in time. Sure. It's also more intense. There's more effects. This is too, like there's more, um, this is more like almost animatronic or puppeted Mm -hmm. a lot of the time as opposed to animated. Mm -hmm. True. Everything is happening in real time. It's not, there's no stop motion or really or anything like that. And uh, even the the digital effects, kind of what they did, where where you know characters change faces or right. something, were were good. And I guess they wouldn't really be digital. They probably were all traditionally on. It's like overlaid. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's like animated yeah, yeah. Ha- by hand, put over film. Like it's thing. literal film effects. Exactly. There there is a little bit of like uh, green, not green screen, but like uh, uh, compositing. Yeah, the, when, the when ending. The, yeah, the ending would definitely that was because the the backgrounds looked they looked really filmed, but as if a camera was going and then they put that over and they put to, layers to give it like depth yeah. yeah but other than that i mean this movie was i i cared about every character the yeah. deaths were great yeah uh the effects on it were great i i had a great time watching this movie for sure uh this is definitely uh, i'll kind of go off of what kieran was saying definitely a tootsie pop oh yeah oh okay uh, wait what 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 flavor tootsie pop uh raspberry i like oh yeah raspberry. the red one yeah those are the good ones um i, th- I think i feel like we've talked about Tootsie Pops in the past over the years. <laughs> uh, I love a good Tootsie Pop. Uh, the only negative part of a Tootsie Pop is it does get stuck in your teeth. It's mm-hmm. still very good, but that teeth shit, you know, I like to keep my, keep my teeth clean. Uh, so I, I don't <laughs> love this movie, but it's very good. There is a distinction there if you've been watching the show mm-hmm. over the years. But uh, what can I say? The effects are really top notch. And that, that tonal shift, even though you might know it's coming, uh, it slaps you in the face hard, uh, and then it just doesn't ever give up. The rest of the movie kind of stays at that uh, uh, tonal level, if yeah. that even makes sense. So yeah, the Tootsie Pop, it's good all the way. You know, you can suck on that thing for like an hour, and it still tastes pretty good. Uh, and then when you chew into that Tootsie uh, part of it, it's still good. But uh, I, I guess to finish the metaphor, maybe we could have cut a little bit of the uh, the chewiness out of this, okay. the, the mm-hmm. chewiness, because uh, I feel like there are a few scenes in this film that drag ass, uh, not including like the scene when we were talking about earlier with the long stalk uh, from not stalk sequence, but Emmy following Oscar that actually works. But there are some scenes where I'm like, and right, we're just hanging on this. Uh, kind of peppered throughout, and it is one of those cases are like, okay, what are you gonna cut four seconds off of every scene? Not saying that, but it was just something I noticed while watching. Yeah. Um, and I think that the plot uh, could have maybe been a little bit deeper, but I feel like now I'm kind of getting into nitpick territory. I'm, I really enjoyed this, and it's kind of fun that it has the game element. I feel like I've never even heard of such a concept, creating the game and the movie at the same time. Obviously, you've heard it in the sense of like the other way around. Like, oh, yeah. we have this movie coming out. Let's make a game. Sure. Uh, yeah. So that alone is really interesting. And the fact that this then... The ideas created in this then essentially created a whole fucking genre. So what more can I really say? I'm excited to play the game. Yeah. Um, I would love to see this in a uh, Blu-ray. Uh, I, I don't know if that's an obvious statement or not, <laughs> but uh, it's not even one of those films where the DVD rip uh, from from Home Video Express yeah. uh, look bad. You could see everything. I just want to see a little more. Yeah. I want to make that detail out a little bit more, but that's not necessarily a knock against the film. It's just... I want to see that. Yeah. Well, you got to get that widescreen, baby. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so Tootsie Pop, Raspberry Tootsie Pop there you this go. year. Uh, this is a full-size Snickers bar. Ooh. Oh, nice. Man, I love this. Resident Evil is... the only, It's only second to Zelda for me. Oh, oh yeah. In yeah. terms of games. Favorite series. Like, favorite game. series of all time. Resident Evil 2 is like top five, top five games. Sure. I absolutely love the series, and... um. Going back to the roots of that, to this film, and having it be like this 
weird haunted house movie with a I like the story a lot in this. I, I, I love I love the the um the mother who lost her child, even though she went fucking crazy oh, and that killed part a bunch of, of babies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that part of it is great. You're right. Um, <laughs> the folklore element. It's, it's so it's so simple. And I think I appreciate that about it because, um, you know, you said that, you, th- that uh, a lot of this was a little too long for you. Sure. But those long parts are all the character building of the of the team of the of the TV news team. And I think that's essential for, again, like Kieran said, caring about the characters at the end of the movie, too, because you kind of go on the journey with them and it mirrors the ghost and what what the ghost is kind of trying to accomplish even though it's murdering everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. You know, yeah. You know. yeah. <laughs> um, it's a really good fucking haunted house movie. The effects are insane. Um, I mean, it's Dick Smith, baby. I mean, you can't beat it. Uh, it every they're, they're few and far between as far as practical effects go in terms of like the makeup uh, and the animatronic stuff. But like, the baby is fucking creepy as hell, yeah. and 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 uh, Lady uh, Mamia at the end is fucking insane. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love the whole transformation there. And again, like I can't help but th- like it, it makes me think of Freddy Krueger, but it also me- makes me think of like William Birkin. You know what uh, I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. yeah. And how he mutates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How he like mutates throughout the pulsating, that kind of like the heads coming. The heads out and coming is out very out much. You know, yeah. like the eyeballs and everything, and like the that. mutation yeah. and stuff. So it's just all those parallels, and they're really, really kick it up a notch for me uh, with this. Um, it's a good time. I, I really like it a lot. It's a goddamn shame that it that it hasn't gotten the love uh, that it needs. And just to the Blu-ray point, like I really think like error four 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 should. Totally pick this up because they've been releasing like some crazy like uh, Japanese horror films lately. Um, they did uh, Anatomica Extinction and some other flicks that I grabbed, um, which you should go check out. They're super limited too. Oh, okay. Um, so like you got to pre-order and get them or else you're not going to see them. But even Vincent Vinegar Syndrome can pick this up. I would love to see them do it or even Terrorvision or something. Terrorvision just released uh, Door, which is... Uh, um, uh, like a lost Japanese slasher oh. home invasion flick. Hmm. Um, so definitely check that out too. But if one of them can grab this, that would be such a fucking treat. Um, and just the pairing of it with the video game. Yeah. It's like a whole experience, man. You know? That kind of kicks it up a notch. It's, That's it true. totally kicks it up because it's like, okay, not only do I get to play the game, but I get to watch the movie and it and like, I, you get the extra visuals in your head, yeah. Like and with the game too, like paired together. So I, I think that's really fun, and I would love to see. I would love to see somebody do that again. I think that'd be really neat if if they did that. Now that I mean, we've seen things like the short films that accompany games. Um, yeah. I think like Neil Blumkamp did one. I forget what the name of the game was, but he was. It was like a future. It was one of those things where it was like the past, but it was the future, and they had like mech suits and shit. I forget what the oh, fuck. Oh, Elysium, called. maybe. Uh, maybe Elysium. Or District 9. It would have been one of those. No, two no, no. Probably. It was like a video game that had a short film oh, okay, around yeah. it. I don't know. Not in the same vein of this. Though. Sure. Like, mm-hmm. like these I get are, the point. These yeah. are companion pieces. These go right. together. It's not like a promotional thing per se. It's like a whole package. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, you can watch them separate and play them separate, but together it's like peanut butter and jelly. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, it's fucking great. It's on YouTube. Check it out. It's a really good time. It's spooky season. It's a great, 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 great ghost movie, uh, haunted house movie, um, and it's a it's a ton of fun. And I it, it deserves more love. I feel like, and I'm very excited to play the game with Kieran on his stream right after this show. So stay tuned. Uh, after we wrap this up, go head over to Twitch, um, and we'll see you there. So yeah, Kieran, uh, what's going on? What's cooking with you? Where can everybody find you? What do you want to promote? Uh, my stream. That's about really all I do is, I mean, uh, twitch.tv slash Kieran, five E's, K-I, five E's, five E's <laughs> R-N. I, I stream all the time. Uh, I've been actually on a big Zelda kick. I'm, I'm in, I'm playing Ocarina of Time now for Got the it. first time. Wow. Top, uh, my top five. Yeah, it's been awesome. I beat Zelda one, two, and uh, Link's Awakening and Link to the Past. Nice. I beat them all in succession. I've wow. never beaten them or and played a few of them too really like, uh, yeah never played zelda one really two or uh link's awakening yeah. and i beat all of them and it was like pretty fun and That's now so i'm cool. doing ocarina of time yeah. uh but we will be playing uh sweet home tonight yeah. so Yes. Yeah, but that's about it. My fun. stream. Just check out my stream. That's what, that's like what I do. Dope. But yeah, before we get out of here, if you want some more Movie Dumpster content, you can head over to patreon.com slash Movie Dumpster. You can get an ad-free audio version of the show, and you can support the show for as little as $2 a month. 
It ain't bad. Trick or treat, motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> give a little something. And for no money at all, you could give Michael Myers a roundhouse kick to the face, or you could like this video if you're watching on YouTube and subscribe. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast app, leave us that five-star review. It really does help get us out of the bottom of the dumpster, into more eardrums, into more eyeballs, everything in between. And it really does help grow this dumpster community. Yeah, and don't forget, for any updates on the show, you can go to moviedumpsterpodcast.com or follow us on any of the social media apps that you happen to haunt at Movie Dumpster. Check us out. Uh, we're going to we're gonna be at Monster Mania again, just a reminder for you, in November. So come hang out with us. It's going to be a really good time. Um, and yeah, we'll we'll catch you then. And and thank you guys for for having me in the in in the set. I, this is the first time I'm actually here. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, because I, I did it over, you know, uh, remote the last time so this is really awesome it's totally a set not my basement <laughs> yes <laughs> right exactly <laughs> it's it's awesome it's really cool we're glad to have you always and thank you always a pleasure man chili baby but so that's it that's sweet home from 1989 directed by kiyoshi kurosawa i'm joel escola i'm sean o'rourke and i'm kieran thanks for visiting the dumpster